everybody, it's Jenny from the Missouri Star Quilt Company, and I've got such a fun project for you today. We're calling it the Freestyle Churn Dash because you can do anything you want on each little piece. Let's take a look at this quilt behind me. Isn't this fun? I mean, it's just fun. Nothing is the same. Everything is left up to however you want to do it, and so it just lets your imagination soar. This is the block that we're working on right here, and let me tell you what you need to make this. So to make this quilt, what you're gonna need is one packet of 10 inch squares, and I have used Citron Twist by Maria Kalinowski for Canvas Studio for Benertex. You're also gonna need some background fabric. Um, what I used was three and a half yards of white, but it's all gonna get cut into five inch squares, so you could use a pre-cut for that also. For our outer border here, this is a little five inch border, and you're gonna need a yard and a half, uh, or a yard and a quarter for that uh, as well. So let me show you how to make this because this is so much fun. First, you're going to cut your background squares into five inch squares or your background fabric into five inch squares and everything is made on these squares. This is basically a nine patch. You're going to use nine of these to make each square. And so what we're going to do is we're going to take our 10 inch square right here and the easiest way, I played with this several times before I figured out really what I wanted to do with this. Let me grab my ruler here because um, you know I don't like waste and I wanted to get the, the best use I could out of this fabric. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our 10 inch square and we're just gonna cut it in half. This seemed to work easiest for me. I mean, you're welcome to, to try whatever you want to too because there's always a better way, you know. So then what we're gonna do is because this is wonky, there are no patterns, no guidelines, this is really up to you. So I try to always remember to leave my, um, my square, the square, the foundation square that I'm piecing on, on the bottom. That, that way I don't get things confused. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this short end of my little piece and I'm gonna put it across here and I'm just gonna put it any way I want to. Tilt it any way you'd like. You can put it in as far, you know, until you get so far that you no longer have fabric, but you don't wanna do that. So I just laid across here like that and we're gonna go and over to the sewing machine and sew this down a quarter of an inch. And we're gonna put one of these squares on either end. And I think that's gonna, that, that'll save us some fabric. So I lay my presser foot right on the edge of the top piece that I'm putting down. And we are just gonna sew across here. And then I like to just flip it around like this and bring another square over here and do the same thing on the, on, the, uh, on the opposite side like this. So you can vary them a little bit so that your, um, you know, your angles are a little different. It's really fun because you get to do what you wanna do. I actually have kind of have a hard time with, uh, with you know, the freedom. So it's kind of fun for me because it's a little bit out of the box. Okay, so again, I'm just gonna line up my presser foot along that edge, so that quarter of an inch, just like that, so off the side. And your piece will look a little like this, kind of a little funky. And we're just gonna come over here to the ironing board and remember that our white piece here is our background. That's the block that's gonna be the foundation piece for what we're doing. So I'm just going to kind of iron those back. Then I'm going to flip them over. And you want to make sure there's no folds or pleats in there. And so I'm just going to lay this on here and just kind of really roll my iron across there and make sure that I don't have any pleats. Then we're going to flip this over. Oh, I want to make sure this is ironed down. We don't want that folded up because that's our pattern. That background foundation piece becomes our pattern. So then I'm gonna take my ruler and I'm gonna lay it right on here like this. And this right here, this square becomes your pattern. So let me, show, let me just turn this a little bit because it might be easier for you to see. So I'm gonna lay up my ruler right along the edge of this. And I'm gonna just slice up here and I'm gonna stop. I don't wanna cut all the way through uh, because I wanna save as much as I can for my side pieces. And then I'm gonna come over here. So it should remain a five inch square, just like that. So let's go ahead and cut this one. So there I am with that one and one more side. Okay, 
So now, as you do these, you're just gonna make a big stack of these. You're gonna put these in a big stack, and then you should have a piece that looks kinda like this. It's really kinda weird looking. But these sides now are gonna make your bar blocks on the sides. So see, these are what I'm calling your bar blocks right here. And we're gonna make those with these sides. So again, you keep your foundation square on the bottom, and you're gonna put this on here, and you can tilt this, you can turn it, you know, get a little crazy, go ahead, put those on the sides. We're gonna put one block on each side. Again, I'm just gonna lay it across there and sew across, just like that. And then I'm gonna add a piece to the other side. So I'm gonna keep my white square on the bottom again. And I'm just gonna turn the other side. So you see how I have this one on this side. Now I'm gonna turn this one over to the other side. And I'm just gonna make it a little different. Go the other direction maybe. You wanna make sure, like see right here how this comes in? You wanna make sure that when you fold it over, it's really gonna cover your piece. So I just watch that kind of carefully. And then we're gonna sew that one down as well. You usually don't have too much trouble with that, honestly. There seems to be plenty of room if you do it this way. Okay, so now over to the ironing board and we're gonna press these down again. Make sure your white block is flat underneath like this. And we're gonna do this side. And then I'm gonna do this side. I'm gonna flip them over, make sure my white block is nice and flat. And then I'm gonna trim this. Again, I'm just lining up, using this as my pattern, lining up my ruler along the edge. Gonna cut that off. Gonna trim this off. And trim around this side. Because all of these stay five inch blocks. They all stay five inch blocks. You're gonna make another pile of those. And the reason we're making it piles of them is because we wanna mix them all up when we start putting our blocks together. Now you are just gonna go ahead and keep doing that until you have a whole stack of them. I have a stack here that I've done that I'm ready to go with, and then we get to assemble our block. Now assembling the block is just as easy as assembling a nine patch. It's just nine squares. So we're gonna have a plain square in the middle, and then we're gonna put our bar blocks around it. So you wanna lay it out. So I'm gonna kinda go through my stack here and get some different colored ones. And let's see if I can find one more color down here. How about this dark, like this? Now let's do this right here. So you just kinda wanna play with them till you get it how you want it. Then we're gonna add our corners. So here is a, there's a cute corner over here. And you never quite know what you're gonna get. And I think this is the fun part because it, you know, it just can be something so fun I'm gonna swap these over here maybe I think like this. Look at that, and there's your block. And then you're just gonna sew together three rows of three. So how I like to do that is I like to just sew, uh, lay them right sides together and sew these, and I'll sew this row and then this middle row and then this bottom row. And so we're just gonna go to the sewing machine and sew these together and make our block. And here's our other seam. I just kind of sew from seam to seam. Make sure that they stay nested. And then you'll have pretty uh, corners on the other side. Alrighty, let's take a look at it. See how I did. I'm gonna press it first. And this time I just press from the top because I want the whole thing to be nice and flat. And I'm gonna flip this over and make sure my seams go the way I want them to. Cause that will be helpful. And then let's look at this. There we go, there's our finished block. These corners look pretty good. And let me show you how you put these together. So let me move these out of the way. 
So when you're ready to put your squares together, you're just going to butt them right up next to each other and sew them together in rows. So we've got four across and five down. So 20 blocks total. And really, when you're sewing them together, again, you're just going to match these little pieces here, these little seams here, I mean, and, uh, and just sew them together and make rows. You're going to sew your next row to it. You don't actually even have to really lay them out because, because all the colors are mixed up. I mean, it, it, I mean, it's just fun. It's just quick and easy sewing. So again, we sewed four across, five rows of that. We added our five inch border to the outside. And before you know it, you have a quilt that is 64 by 77. Great little size of a quilt. So I hope you have fun with this. I hope you, you know, let some of that inner wildness out and uh, make your blocks all different and crazy. And we hope you enjoyed this tutorial on the Freestyle Churn Dash from the Missouri Star Quilt Company. So one more thing, don't forget about that back. This is where those big prints really shine. Take a look at that. Isn't this gorgeous? So fun on the back. To back this quilt, what you're gonna need is about four and three quarter yards of fabric. So have fun. <laughs>